It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So if you guys have seen my channel before then you probably saw me trying to skip the crumb coat process using American buttercream. That was when I was working at Rachel's shop which means I had all the buttercream and cakes that I could ask for. But this time around I made all of my cakes from scratch and I also made my own Italian meringue buttercream. Now this is my go-to recipe that I always like to use. You guys can go ahead and check that out in the description box below if you're interested. Now as always on this channel, I must be honest with you guys, if you're looking for a video that's going to show you how to perfectly skip the crumb coat using Swiss meringue or Italian meringue buttercream, this is definitely not the video for you. This video is really just chronicling my journey on how I am trying to learn how to be better with buttercream and I kind of just stuck to one way for a long, long time and now I'm trying to switch things up. Now I will say that I am going to be covering these cakes in fondant later, so that's why I don't spend too long trying to perfect this. I also don't use a torch which generally gets rid of all of those bubbles that you're going to end up seeing in my buttercream but also if you don't have a torch the way you get rid of those bubbles is mixing it way lower and slower. I was in a bit of a rush so I was going fast with it. Now all of that being said, I am trying to eliminate the crumb coat still. So what I learned from last time, not just from you guys, but from Rachel also hassling me about this for the last decade is, yep, I flipped my spatula around. This was a big, big comment in my last video. So I've swapped it and I've made sure that I'm using the other side, which I must say did give me a lot more control and is helping me get that edge at the top. Now I was doing pretty good with this particular cake, much better than my first attempt using American buttercream on that other video. However, because this is Italian meringue buttercream, it's a lot more pillowy soft, so I can't be as aggressive with it. And because unlike last time, I'm not texturizing the sides of these or anything, I need the shape to be pretty crisp because I'm going to be covering it in fondant. So I tried not to go over it too, too much. Like at this point, it looked okay, but I see lots of gaps here and there and I would never be able to actually send that out the door to a customer or even just to a friend or somebody that I was making a cake for. So I decided to just kind of sculpt it the way that I needed it for the fondant cake and give up on this particular one for that perfect no crumb coat look. I also did attempt to try to swipe towards me the way Rachel does instead of doing it that way, but uh, no, that just really didn't work. On to cake number two. Now I'm definitely not going to get as many chances with this as I did at the bake shop. I only get three chances with this, so I was really, really hoping that this one was going to work out. It's a little four inch, sometimes four inches or anything smaller can be more difficult, I find, especially when I'm doing fondant coverage, but I thought maybe for buttercream it might be a different story. So again, going in with that same technique, being really, really generous with the buttercream here because I always found that I was a little bit skimpy with the buttercream in the first place and that's what caused a lot of my issues. So really, really trying to avoid that. And again, I am using a really tall bench scraper this time around. I found that the first time around when I'm trying to skip that crumb coat, it works best if I use the larger and taller bench scraper, but no. See, my shape was going all out of whack with that cake, so I decided, again, because I need to cover these in fondant later for an actual project that I should just let it go. Now here is my third and final attempt and I must say this isn't the greatest attempt only because it's just two layers instead of the usual three or four layers that my cakes would be but again for this particular project I need a cake this short. So I'm still going at it though with the same type of technique. The other times they didn't seem to work because of the placement of the buttercream I believe and then as I scraped off then I was digging into too much and I didn't want to alter the shape. So this time I'm being really cognizant about where I am placing that buttercream and making sure that I like the shape-ish before I actually scrape off. I think that really is the key. The thing that's really different about using Italian meringue buttercream as opposed to the American buttercream is I really feel like my spatula needs to dance on the surface of the buttercream. Like I cannot let it dip as much as when I could when I was using the American buttercream, which was quite, quite thick. Keep in mind, in Italian meringue buttercream, there is no powdered sugar, so you just don't get that same feeling. It's a lot more pillowy soft as I had mentioned. So I was crossing my fingers, but not really because I'm holding the spatula, but in my head I was crossing my fingers as I scraped this off. 
One thing I learned too from watching my video over and over again with Rachel to look at her technique, I saw that she didn't play around with it too much. Even if there were small, tiny little imperfections, she didn't keep going and that's always my problem. I always see some sort of imperfection that I have and then I keep going and then it just ends up looking not right and then I didn't achieve that no crumb coat process. So I think with this one, yes, I can definitely, definitely see imperfections, but it's a lot closer. It could be cleaner, especially if I used a torch when doing this, then I wouldn't have as much bubbling going on. But I will say, even though there's definitely huge room for improvements here, I was happy with how quickly this came together. I took a lot longer last time in the bakery. This time it was faster. Are these cakes looking perfect? Absolutely not. But this is going to work perfectly for fondant coverage, and I felt like I achieved that in a much faster fashion. Now this was only my second try trying to skip this crumb coat process. I know a lot of you guys actually do that already and have always done that, but I'm looking forward to one day hopefully being able to master this skill. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the day. I mean, how delicious does this Oreo cake look? So this is from at bakeinlove underscore on Instagram. Be sure to follow them, drop them a like, and comment on this lovely cake. And if you want to be the next subscriber submission on this channel, be sure to follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram where you can either tag me or message me whatever photos that you would like featured on this channel. All levels and desserts welcome. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!